in today's video. I am so excited, you guys, because I have a Christmas and July video for you doing some Kirkland's dupes. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Hey friends, my name's Melissa. I am so happy and grateful to have you here. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Farmhouse decor is my specialty and much, much more. So I would love to have you become part of my crafty family by just clicking that red subscribe button, tapping the bell and all. That way you're notified every single time I upload. So with all that being said, let's not waste any time and let's get crafting. Okay, friends, now this is not going to look exactly like the one from Kirkland's, but I just get inspiration and then I like to decorate mine the way that I personally feel happy about for my own home. So we're going to start off with Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree and I make four rows of seven blocks. Now I had trouble getting these glued together you guys i tried hot glue um i tried super glue and i'm just way too impatient so i definitely recommend to use a little bit of wood glue and just letting them set for about 20 minutes and you'd be surprised how nice and sturdy these are with just a little bit of hot glue after just a few minutes Next, I go in to glue these down to this box from Dollar Tree that has the little label on the front. And I glue these down with some hot glue and a bead of wood glue because the wood glue is going to ensure that it is a long lasting hold. And the wood glue, and the, I'm sorry, the hot glue is going to ensure that you have a quick hold. To make the top of this, I tried to put some Jenga blocks at the top. Now you could totally do that, but then I realized how cute this would be for the top and the bottom to look exactly the same. So I got the same decorative box from Dollar Tree that was an identical match. I put some glue on the end of my Jenga blocks and then I clamped them down to the second box. Next, I clamped them down with some little clips from Dollar Tree and my black clamps that I got from Walmart. And I also took off the sticker off the top box and then sanded down that glue residue so that we had a nice clean surface at the top. And then I also removed the little tags on the front and that way once we go to paint this, you have once again a nice clean surface to paint on. You don't have to go around labels and uh, you know, be worried that you're gonna paint on the labels. If you just take them off, it's much easier to paint your piece. I then stained this with my Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain. You guys, I love this. It's water-based, so it comes out of your brushes really easily, dries really evenly, and I just love the, col the coverage <laughs> that it gives. To make the top of this, I took two wood pieces from Dollar Tree. One is a square, or they're both squares, but the bottom piece is more of a decorative square piece so I just take those and then I also take another piece of poplar that I get from Home Depot I cut just a little square down for the top of that and then I take all of the stickers off next I sand down that sticker residue once again and then stain all three pieces with my Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain Now, because we're gonna glue all of these together, I did not worry about staining the bottom of these, but if that bothers you and you would like to have all of the sides stain, then you go ahead and do whatever tickles your fancy. But for me personally, it doesn't bother me that the bottoms are unfinished because you're not gonna see them. I dry them with my blow dryer because I am super impatient. And then on the original one, it was just plain brown. There was no distressing, but for me personally, I love distressing and my decor is distressed. So I went ahead and used this Ivory Waverly chalk paint and my mini chip brush to dry brush all the way around all three of my squares. Thank you. 
Next, I glue them all together from largest piece to smallest piece. And then once I was done gluing the squares together, I went in my stash and I had these little handles I bought them last year, I forget for what, um, but they are linked in my Amazon shop in the description box below and I just hot glued that to the top square. Next I go in with my lantern and I dry brush all the way around the lantern just as I did the top square pieces. I then get my drill and I reattach those label holders to the front. And for the top one, since I put this upside down, I did go ahead and screw that label holder the right side up so that it all looked cohesive. I still felt the label holders were missing a little something, so I just went in with a tiny paintbrush and my gold rub and buff and I just dry brushed a little bit of that rub and buff all around the label holders to make them look a little bit more vintage. And then you guys, last but not least, I glued the top onto our lantern, stuck a candle in there and decorated it. And that was it, you guys. That was so super easy to put together. You don't need any special skills or really any special tools. So I love the fact that I made this for $8 when that one was $50. I could not believe the price and I absolutely love the way that mine turned out and I know you'll let me know down in the comments. Do you like the Kirkland's one better or do you like the one from Dollar Tree better? Moving on, when I see stuff like this, you guys, it just boggles my mind at how much they can charge for such simple decor like this because all we needed was three pieces. Now, I thought I had plungers from the Dollar Tree, which I did not. So if you do, definitely use that. But I had these larger dowels from my daughter's teepee that we had gotten rid of and I kept the large dowels for projects that I've had for about two years. So I knew that that would be perfect for this. And then I took a plaque from the Dollar Tree as well as an arrow from the Dollar Tree and gave them all a distressed coat of my Crimson Waverly chalk paint. I also forgot to mention that I took the large dowel, measured it to the size of my liking and then cut it down with my um, mini circular saw is what it's called. I get a lot of questions about my mini circular saw. I have it linked in my Amazon shop. Um, the problem is you need the tool and the battery. Um, so I did link that kit down in the description box. Um, DeWalt is a really, really good brand and it will last you for years. So just keep that in mind. Um, but that's down there for you guys. I cut that down. Again, gave these all a distress coat. And then I was going to design, you know, something on the computer. But honestly, you guys, I had one day to get these DIYs out to you. So I went in my stash and... You guys, using the chalk couture just never gets old. It's so easy. It comes out so crisp and clean. And I bought it with my hard-earned money, so why not use it? So I pulled out the mistletoe transfer, transferred that on with my white chalk paste, washed it so that I can use it again, and then I drew a line all the way around the arrow with a white paint pen and then attached it with some hot glue to that dowel rod and that was it you guys i made mine for five bucks i totally forgot to embellish embellish this you guys i meant to put the little jute and some bells and you know do my own thing but i like i said was in a time crunch and i really wanted to get this next project out to you guys so anyway for five bucks I love the way that this turned out. I actually love it more than the milk and cookies one, but you can let me know what you think as well. Okay friends, moving on to our last and final project, I take three of these large stir steak packs from Home Depot. Now in the end, I used four packs. So 
Um, we're going to use 12 pieces all together. But me personally, these are only a dollar a piece and it doesn't bother me to use a few packs of these. So I measured them down to the size that I wanted and then used my little saw to cut it down to size. And then to glue these together, I took the smaller stir sticks and I needed about one and a quarter, one and a half. Um, so I did just cut the half pieces down to size and then glued those to the top and the bottom and the back with some wood glue and hot glue. I then stained the entire thing with my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. And in order to see that these are different pieces of wood, um, I probably should have left like a tiny gap, but that's okay. You live and you learn, right? <laughs> So to make those gaps stand out a little bit more, I just took my utility knife and ran it down the gaps so that way the stain could be removed. And then this is the fun part. You don't have to do this the exact way that I did it. I really just had fun with this part. I started out by painting a few of them the solid ivory color and then with that same brush without dipping it back into the paint i just randomly dry brushed on some of the pieces going more heavy handed on some lighter on others and then like for this one i did dip my paintbrush back in the paint just to give it some streaks I also used my mini chip brush to dry brush on a few of them and then I also left a few of them with the plain wood. Now a lot of times I cut the painting down just because I do know that there are newer crafters but painting is pretty self-explanatory so I do kind of cut the painting down most of the time but for this particular project I did leave it in in case you guys want to copy the exact same way that I did mine and that way you kind of can see how to do yours. For the wording you guys I have had this transfer for a few years now. I got it um, when I first started chalking around two years ago at Christmas time and I love the fact that now you guys can get these at 40% off. So if you guys want any information on how to get transfers 40% off, and it's kind of like Cricut Design Access, so let me know. I can get you guys all that information. That way you can get your transfers on the low like I do. That's the exact same price that I pay for them. So I know a lot of you guys um, would appreciate the discount. So anyway, I transferred on my wording with some black chalk paste and gold uh, shimmer paste. And then for the barn, this is another one that I've had forever. Um, this is actually my absolute favorite transfer. As you can see, it's had a lot of love over the years and I just can't part with it. So I'm really taking care of it. But I transferred on because it's layered. So for the first layer, I transferred that on with my black chalk paste. And then for the second layer, um, once the first layer was dry, I went in with the gold once again. Now, when I pulled up the first side, I realized that you could not really see the window detail. So on the second side, I did transfer on the gold detail once again, but for the windows, I transferred that on with my white chalk paste. Once the second side was done, I just removed the transfer, put that back on the first side, and went over those windows with my white paste so that it all looked cohesive. For the frame, I took these square dowels that I had in my stash that I actually bought to build my son these canvases. I had bought some pictures off Amazon that I thought were already stretched, but come to find out they were not. So I had to buy some dowels to do his canvases and I had some left over. So I cut those down to size and then I painted those with that same ivory Waverly chalk paint. And then to glue this together, once again, I used my wood glue and hot glue. I know I'm gonna get a bunch of questions on the glue bot, so this little wood glue dispenser thing is 
also linked in my Amazon shop down in the description box. Anything you guys are like looking for, you can probably find there. Um, but I just glued them all together around the sign. And then to make sure that the sign is not going to go anywhere, I flipped it over and attached some Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree with some hot glue to the edges. I also ran a bead of hot glue around the edges to once again make sure that it wasn't going to go anywhere and that was it you guys i had so much fun making this sign it's definitely not something i would normally do so i really love this technique and i'll definitely be using it again oh i did dry brush a little bit of that dixie bell gel voodoo stain around the edges the original one was just plain white and for this particular sign, I did not go super heavy handed. Um, but you guys can let me know, would you have left the dry brushing out of this one or would you have went a little bit more heavy handed or, <laughs> or do you like the way that I made mine for just $8? You guys, that sign was $39.99 from Kirkland's. And you can make these so, so much cheaper. And you can also customize them and make them the way that you like and to suit your own home decor. So that was it for this video, you guys. I had such an amazing time once again making these Christmas DIYs for you. We still have a little bit of time left in July. So let me know in the comments if you guys want me to bring you another Christmas in July. Just one more before we get into fall DIYs. I can definitely do that. Just let me know down in the comments down below. I also have a big goal of getting to 100K by the time my baby boy is born in October. So don't forget to share this out. Hit that thumbs up for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps my channel to grow and helps YouTube to notice me a bit more. So with all that being said, you guys, thank you so much for being here. You guys know I love and appreciate every single one of you. If nobody has told you today, you're absolutely absolutely stunning. You're worthy. You're gorgeous. You literally can do anything you set your mind to. Don't forget for any ketone info, text my number. I got a text number for you guys. Yes, it's actually me. So just text the number 302-204-0881. Text the word ketones or text the word transfers and I will get you guys that information. So I lost 60 pounds recently on the ketones and I would love to help you guys as well. So with all that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.